Now, I would like to uh, talk about developing an ecosystem for more secure Kubernetes secret management. Now, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. I am uh, Yamaguchi, a software engineer at Yahoo Japan. I've been working for Yahoo Japan since 2017. I belong to the data protection technology team and I've been developing and operating systems related to data protection in the company since I joined. Since my work is related to data protection, what I am going to talk about today is related uh, to the handling of secret data in our company's Kubernetes environment. Specifically, I'll be talking about the Secret Store CSI driver project, which we have implemented as an ecosystem for our internal Kubernetes platform. I will present our case studies on the process of implementation and how we integrate it the secret store CSI driver with our internal computing platform. And I will be talking about the principle of operation of a secret store CSI driver and the benefits of this ecosystem. By the way, today I may use uh, SSCD for short for a secret store CSI driver, aka-S for Kubernetes. This is today's agenda. I'd like to first talk about why we came to develop this ecosystem. Next, more details about the Secret Store CSI driver, SSCD, uh, then overview of the ecosystem. Now, uh, let me begin by the reason why uh, we had to introduce SSCD as a, our ecosystem. As a part of our internal data protection, Yahoo Japan operates its own secret manager. In addition to protecting each secret data, it has the same function as a secret manager in the public cloud, such as revoke, version control. Uh, the types of secret data stores vary widely, including database passwords, API keys, and encryption keys. Secret Manager centralizes the management of many types of secret data in the company. We also have services optimized for each platform to make it easier for developers to use. My main work is the development of various collaborative services and also the operation of Secret Manager itself and the development of new features. Yahoo Japan has many uh, different uh, computing platforms and requests. Uh, we receive quite a bit uh, to the secret manager constantly from different environments. We have in-house PaaS, FAS, and also other well-known ones, as well as our own Kubernetes-based development platform, which uh, provides a development environment that developers can freely configure, depending on the requirements and the scale they need. Therefore, Secret Manager is deployed on a large scale. We have expectation that it will be used by significant number of users. Of course, uh, we need authentication authorizations. That's essential. The authentication platform is also used for in-house operation. It's built using Ascend OSS. Secret Manager is used in conjunction with Ascend to provide appropriate access control. Uh, recently, as the Kubernetes development has become more of a mainstream within our company, the handling of secret data within Kubernetes also needed to be updated as well. But the integration between Secret Manager and the Kubernetes environment was not sufficient, and a more convenient and secure method for developer was in need. And in addition, different platforms have different developer needs. And so we needed a system uh, that which can accommodate a wider range of developers' needs. Developer can retrieve data from secret managers at any time. Secret managers are like a safe. If this is the real world, you know, taking something valuable outside the safe and then carry it elsewhere uh, it has a lot of risk. You may drop it. You may somebody may steal it. So. It's a similar situation. If there's no support or mechanism system for developers, uh, they must extract the secret data themselves and carry it with them until the application uses it. So that means that the developer is responsible the, for the process of usage. And this, this is really a security risk. 
in, in its process itself. So and with so many users, it's next to impossible to know what secret management is being done in individual base. And it's difficult to guarantee security. So it was necessary for secret manager administrator to reduce those responsibilities on an individual base as much as possible. Now I'd like to talk about the, how we were handling secret data before the ecosystem. The three main methods were used. The first method was to use Kubernetes secret resource. The second method was using a sidecar. And the third method was used to use a client library. These are Yahoo Japan specific cases. Each of these methods has its own problems. The common issues was that uh, each method placed a certain amount of responsibility on the developer side, uh, causing uh, their uh, productivities to be impacted. Now I'd like to explain about the each method briefly, then uh, share those issues. Uh, first, let me talk about uh, Kubernetes as secret resource usage to manage secret data. Secret resource is a commonly used method, so many of you are probably very familiar with it already. When an application needs a secret data, it creates a secret resource. And the target pod handles that resource as an environment variable or volume map. Uh, there are um, various uh, cases where secret data is brought in from. Many of them can be created on CI, CD, by embedding secret data in a manifest, or a developer may be managing a manifest himself or herself. The uh, created secret data is stored in etcd. The etcd is only the data source for ensuring the integrity and confidentiality of Kubernetes secret in that cluster. On the other hand, secret resource has several drawbacks. First, it say it is uh, encryption. That's an unavoidable topic uh, when using secret resource. Since data is normally stored in plain text, it's necessary to encrypt that it say the, to ensure confidentiality. However, it puts a responsibility to the key management of that encryption key on the cluster administrator. Especially for Yahoo Japan, there are so many clusters which places a considerable burden on the cluster manager. Uh, then uh, data obtained from the secret manager cannot be used as is, and so it was necessary to make some modifications so that can be used as a secret resource. As I mentioned, uh, uh, it's a complicated process because I need to embed the data in the manifest and other steps. And when the processing secret data on CICD, it's necessary to prevent the data from appearing in logs. So in many cases, uh, it's larger up to the description of the developer. It's even more difficult in a case where the secret data is managed locally because the developer must ensure the confidential data himself, which can lead to data leaks too. And also, developers who have authority to create a pod that uses secret resource uh, can see the content. So developers need to be careful about their credentials as well. Next, about our unique uh, sidecar usage method for secret manager. This sidecar was developed by our team uh, to work with a secret manager. Application can communicate with a sidecar within pods and handle secret data held by the sidecar. Compared to the secret resource, the sidecar retrieves that data instead, which frees the developer from the responsibility of managing secrets. Please note that the secret manager involves access control by AdSense. So from a historical reasons, it was necessary to put the authentication information as a secret resource. The specification of placing authentication information as a secret resource may have hit some, may have brought you some ideas, uh, but uh, it, uh, it brings us back to the issue of management with secret resource that I mentioned earlier. That means that the fundamental problem hasn't been solved by using the sidecar as an implementation issue. Application must wait until the sidecar retrieves the secret data before processing it. This means that the developer will have to add the input imperative to sidecar somewhere and the resources sidecar itself are also not negligible as the number of pods grows and so does the number of sidecars which in turn consumes cluster resource. Next, our own unique method of a client library for secret manager which our own internal team developed. 
This is more of a straightforward approach. Instead of acquiring secret data by a sidecar, the application itself acquires the data directly from the secret manager. If implemented according to the specification of the client library, the applic application can work with a secret manager without any effort on the part of a developer, thus eliminating the need to handle uh, the secret data directly. On the other hand, one problem is uh, learning the uh, cost of using the client library. And the cost cannot be ignored since it must be implemented to meet the library specification. Error handling when the secret data cannot be retrieved, network errors and so forth will need to be implemented in the application. And furthermore, the use of client library increases the number of dependency in the project. This means that the version control and the client library and its updates must be checked on a case-by-case -case basis. So to summarize, before the X system was introduced, the way each secret data was handled depending on the developer, and the process varied from one person to another person. So in an environment where security cannot be guaranteed without human intervention, there is a risk that we cannot ignore. Therefore, it is necessary to support automation or some other mechanism. For developers, it should be productive to have them focus on application development the ideal environment is one that reduces the burden of secret management and does not require special sidecars, libraries, and modules. More freedom and focus on development should free us from the pains of secret management. So there are several projects we compared so that uh, the, uh, as an ecosystem, uh, there should be, uh, that should be introduced. We studied about it. So we consider the four listed here, taking into account the internal environment and the security measures and the cost of implementation. First, the external secret operator has the en entire implementation for integration in a repository that was uh, found to be a significant disadvantage in terms of development and uh, management. Shared Secrets is a project with a GitOps premise we have abandoned the project because GitOps is not recommended in our company and it is not compatible with our security measures. So we gave it up. HashiCorp Vault was also eliminated as an option due to the management and the cost of the Vault cluster itself. SSCD was found to be the most suitable for our requirements due to its simplicity of configuration and advantages of easy integration with the internal platform, as explained later, made it the most suitable for our requirements. Therefore, we implemented SSCD as an ecosystem, and SSCD is the most suitable for our requirements because of its simplicity of configuration and integration with our internal system. Next, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, what SSCD is, which is a central portion of our the ecosystem. So first, I'd like to mention CSI. However, detailed explanation will be a distracting factor from the topic at hand. So I just uh, touch upon it. Container storage interface CSI is an API specification for controlling container storage. And the CSI driver implemented according to the specification accesses the storage and connects the storage volume uh, to the container. Data can be used. Storage vendors can develop CSI compliant drivers to work with the target storage by satisfying CSI. It is possible to achieve the same process with the container orchestration methods and numbers other than Kubernetes. So among these CSI drivers, the one obtaining a secret data from an external secret manager and mounting it as a storage volume is a container is a SSCD or a secret store CSI driver. However, SSCD consists of the CSI driver itself and the provider that must be implemented separately. When using SSCD, it will only work when there is a provider that is compatible with the external secret manager. For instance, uh, AWS, GCP, Azure, each have uh, their own secret manager, and each of them has a corresponding uh, provider. So if you are using a public cloud, you can use SSCD right away. If you are interested, you can try it out. SSCD 
does not require development of the CSI driver itself, and the processing can be realized simply by implementing the provider. The provider itself does not require a large amount of implementation, and the specification of how it should be fulfilled are provided. The number of interfaces presented is at most two, since the implementation is mainly linked with the secrets manager, a simpler implementation is required. This flexible configuration with external integration allows for easy implementation even if the secret manager is on-premise and the implementation is simple. The advantage is that the implementation is simple, simple and easily implemented. This diagram in this slide shows how SSCD and the provider work. Generally speaking, both are deployed as a daemon set so that each worker node always has both as a set. When a mount is requested, a request is made from SSCD to provider to acquire secret data as shown in arrow from flow in the slide. And after that, the acquired data is mounted on a targeted port. Since SSCD and the provider exist for each node, ports are always mounted by the provider that existing on the same node. The major difference is that the SSCD obtains the secret data out of sight of the developer, whereas client libraries and sidecars obtain the secret data actively in the port. In other words, since secret data acquisition is supported at the platform level, there is no need to cover the parts of the operation that are covered, such as when using secret resource, or the parts that are not covered by SSCD, such as when using a client libraries or sidecars. So I was talking about mounting the secret data, but I will go in a little bit into the details here. SSCD creates uh, the temp PFS area in advance before starting container, and the provider writes the secret data there as a file after acquiring it. From the application's point of view, it means that the secret data can be handled by reading the file. Naturally, the pot, uh, uh, file disappears when the pot disappears, so it cannot be used. The principle of operation is to retrieve the secret data each time a pot is created. So the operation of SSCD has a security characteristics similar to secret resource. For instance, secret data is placed in the TMPFS area is not written to disk storage. It exists in memory only the pot uh, window is running. And also secret data, uh, requested secret data can only be referenced by the container. With the secret resource, you can read it if you have uh, permission to access the Kubernetes API. But with SSCD, the method is close to the container, so it's highly confidential. Another advantage is that it's not stored in SSCD, thus freeing the cluster administrator from key management of encryption keys. Thus, one of the features of this method is that it is beneficial for both developers and cluster devel administrator. The following is an example of the developer side usage. SSCD has a custom resource definition called the secret provider class, which contains information on the secret data to be retrieved from secret manager. Example on the slide shows the use of SSCD with Amazon EKS. The provider under the specification is the AWS provider, and object is the name of the target of the secret. As a, a workload resource, by specifying the secret provider metadata name and mount point, and the secret data is mounted on a targeted container. In this way, there is no need to directly describe the secret data in a manifest, but only to declaratively describe the secret name, thus making it secure from the development stage. By using SSCD, developers do not have to worry about the handling of the secret data. So naturally, uh, it's secure from the uh, starting point. Meanwhile, there is a limitation on that mounted secret data is not automatically updated. For instance, the, uh, if the secret provider class introduced area is changed, and if there is a change in the secret data on the secret manager size, the mounted data will not reflect the change. If you want the updates to be reflected, you need to restart the pod. This is due to the fact that the mounting operation is performed only before the container is started. 
So this limitation itself is a correct behavior to ensure e equality, but it does not address the need to have a secret data updated automatically. Next, uh, we, I will briefly describe how I incorporated SSCD as an uh, internal ecosystem with others. This ecosystem is not uh, generic, as this is example implemented for Yahoo Japan's platform. However, I think it will give you some ideas on how to implement SSCD. In order to implement SSCD as an ecosystem, it needed to work with various platforms in the company. The secret manager, authentication platform, and Kubernetes platform work in concert with each other. We needed to introduce SSCD as an ecosystem without any distortion with each platform, without any discrepancy here. Having said that, the provider itself is not a large implementation, so what we had to do was uh, very clear. Actually, the computing platform we are targeting is based on Kubernetes, so there was no significant impact as far as the CSI driver is concerned. However, the integration with the secret manager also requires integration with Athens, the authentication platform. The general flow of the provider process is described in this slide. First, authentication information must be obtained. Then, the target secret data is obtained using that authentication information. Finally, the data is written into a volume. Most in-house computing platforms are linked to an authentication platform, allowing for the dispensing of the credentials on a per-service basis. The credentials are issued in the form X.509 certificates, which in Kubernetes environment are issued for each service account. For example, so the, it will be uh, actually the authentication information. Application use these credentials to access resources, access controlled by Athens. By following this mechanism for issuing authentication information, the ecosystem was able to work smoothly with the authentication platform. The provider obtains authentication information for the pod to be mounted and uses this, make, this to make a request to the secret manager. This means that the access controls are performed on a pod by pod basis. For this reason, authentication information and secret data are requested each time a pod is started. Since this authentication information is not reused, it can be said that the authentication is used for temporarily. In terms of confidentiality, the exchange of authentication information and the secret data is completed only within the provider, making it more secure. Uh, this flow is uh, very similar to what is done in other providers such as AWS, GCP. You can refer to publicly available repository for the operation of the each provider. There are different uh, forms of Kubernetes clusters in the, the company depending on the computing platform. Uh, the Kubernetes as a service, uh, some uh, give uh, developers uh, clusters, and while others we can centrally manage multi-clusters as a basis for applications execution. So we have many clusters of all different sizes within Yahoo Japan. We have had to develop an ecosystem that broadly addresses the use cases and needs of these computing platform. But as I've been mentioning, simplicity of SSCD's configuration and the provider's ability to absorb external collaboration allowed us to deploy without worrying about the platform differences. By deploying it as an ecosystem, the acquisition of secret data on each computing platform can be supported from the platform. This also helps to reduce the security concerns on, the part on behalf of developers. Now I'd like to talk about the future uh, work. The ecosystem itself has been applied to the production environment on some platform, but still the awareness within uh, Yahoo Japan's uh, low. So, uh, we would like to spread the words about the benefits of this ecosystem we've announced this time and encourage more developers to use it. And furthermore, for some platform uh, that hasn't been introduced, we're considering whether we can introduce them while maintaining the current form of the ecosystem. SSCD takes the secret data as a file and volume mounts it in a container. And uh, this characteristic makes it unsuitable for handling as an environment variable. But 
SSCD has an additional feature called sync as a Kubernetes secret. Uh, this is a function that further creates a mounted secret data as a secret resource. And since it can be handled as a conventional secret resource, it can be easily applied to environment variables. But uh, there is a limitation uh, for uh, not being able to do the auto update, uh, even if the external resources change. So the same is true for the secret resource created by this function. So it's necessary to delete the secret resource once updating it. So it's a time consuming process for developer and could be a cause of accidents, which is why we're not introduced to this feature yet. We are still working on a good solution, but we are not able yet able to meet the demands for handling secret data in the environment variables. Now the summary. By incorporating secret store CSI driver as an ecosystem into a private cloud, developers can now implement more secure secret management without even being aware of it. By having SSCD handle everything from the authentication process to acquisition of the secret, the secure state is built in naturally from the beginning. DevOps are free from the complexity of managing secrets and can handle them securely from the development stage. This allows developers to concentrate more on application development, which should lead to the productivity improvement. And Yahoo Japan's development environment is becoming more secure with introduction of this Kubernetes platform as an ecosystem. I hope this announcement have, have brought your interest uh, in our ecosystem. Then please consider using SSCD. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yamaguchi. Now we would like to bring in the interviewer uh, to have the interviewer ask some uh, questions. Uh, related to the presentation. We also are taking questions uh, from the audience. For those with questions, uh, please send us your questions by using the question button at the bottom of your screen. The interviewer is from Line Thailand, uh, Mr. Pumrat Boon Yawang. Would you please briefly introduce yourself, please? Everyone. Uh, my name is Pumrat Bunya Wong. I'm working as an SRE lead for Lai Thailand. So thank you a lot for presenter. I have several questions. It's quite interesting topic, the secret management. Um, firstly, I would like to know uh, what, what would happen if the pod restart and provider cannot re retrieve secret for some reason? What, what would it work? How would it work? <laughs> At that time, the pod restart will fail because without attaining secret, pod will not run. So you cannot restart the pod. You cannot start the pod in that case. I see. Ah,わかりました。ありがとうございます。そうしますと、次の二つ目の質問です。External secret. So we will develop a custom thing in init container to basically pull a secret and mount it into file system. So similar to your approach where the pod got file. Um, uh, it seemed comparable. How, how would you compare that approach to your current one in NACD? Pro and cons, if you, as you see. So that method as a unit container, uh, you are injecting application in advance to retrieve a secret. Is that uh, the intent of the method you have described? Correct. <laughs> so there are benefits. And uh, uh, so we would like to know drawbacks as well as the benefits based on that understanding. Am I right? in understanding the question in that manner? In, in your will. Certainly. So, 
there might be some uh, one benefit possible for SSCD. The SSCD uh, prior to the container can retrieve the secrets earlier with earlier timing. That's a benefit. You don't have to be worried about the specific sequence, and you don't have to be that uh, in a in a container. So uh, secret is already placed, and you can write a, a, a run the application. So regardless of status of the container, you can run it. That's one benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Another benefit that I can mention is that controller that you're talking about. That's a, a is that the line in-house product that you're talking about? So uh, uh, Okay, if that's the case, uh, probably uh, you are deploying on the controller level many different ways. But the SSCD deployment is very simple. I mean, that's what I tried to communicate in my presentation. So maintenance ability, ease of operation, and you will have uh, you know less to deploy. And that's a benefit for you, I would think. Yeah, I agree. It it looked pretty simple. Okay. Let me move on. Um, one more question is... Oh, should I mention about the disadvantage? Cons? Yes, please. Ah. Okay, so... Um, uh, regarding environment variables or updating a secret automatically, and that's the difficulties in a container how to support that i am not sure how you're doing it, how it's done but the disadvantage the shortcoming may be similar uh, for sscd because secret update is uh, really a shortcoming of sscd and it's very difficult to handle as an environment of variables that's a challenge we have with sscd okay agree thank you um so more question that might be interest is how how would the secret update process look like in this end-to-end -end flow as a user? Mm -hmm. uh, So the secret update process for the user side, before a pod restart, the secret's already placed. So that's how it's deployed. So in this context, when a secret had to be updated for the user side, there are two things. One is a secret provider class, a custom authentication resource process then application pod has to be updated. Am I answering your questions? Was that clear? Yeah. Okay. So, to update the secret, then coordinate restarting. Right, that, that's the process. Thank you. Okay, Correct. and relating, a hype relating to that question, uh, what if I have a lot of pods, mm -hmm. thousand, let's say, and they all have to update, so mm -hmm. they all restart at the same time or, or close time. Mm -hmm. Would that put a strain on your secret manager or how would that work? Yes. In my presentation slide, I, I touched upon it. The provider's behavior be prior to the operation working with the pot, the provider would retrieve the secrets and replace the secrets. So because of this nature of operation, hundreds or thousands of pots operation prior to that operation, that the processing would have taken place. SSCD and the provider and external secrets manager, naturally, they are under uh, strain, significant strain. Okay, got you. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, also, I got um, impression that you said it's 
a new thing and uh, adoption is still start, right? Um, maybe my, my thinking is because um, developer has to change their application to read from file and, and that require modification. Um, but if you can expose this as um, environment variable, that might help with adoption. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you, you touch a bit that it is possible, but um, what, what would be your plan to do that? <laughs> For your uh, question, I covered that in my future work section. So you place the secrets and in a container, in a container, there will be a technical operation uh, to uh, just uh, uh, the discharge it uh, to the environmental variable. But like a Kubernetes secret resource, you cannot directly deal with it as an environmental variable. So such additional steps would be needed. And also, the new additions that seekers uh, the uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, the process. After the mounting of the secrets, as a uh, secret object, you can deal with it and create it as a secret object. Therefore, for users, it's somehow as if that through SSCD secret resources have been newly created, and as an environment variable, uh, they can use it, but the, the new function is still uh, regarded as a skeptical uh, operation. They are, they are prone to accident. So we have not uh, deployed it yet. Then what kind of approaches as a uh, saving measure we will have for this item? Still study is underway. Uh, we are still studying. So uh, we cannot share a specific uh, direction to go. Ah, I see, so it's all planned. Thank you. And um, maybe Lastly, um, can you share the system resource of this whole thing? Because it seemed to be uh, two pods on every node, right? And how, how would it work at scale? Okay, about the... Scaling the at the moment we don't have idea to scale uh, for the I per node. Uh, we have a SSCD pod and the providers pod one and one. So uh, at the moment we don't have an idea uh, to scale this. But regarding the load, that's something. Yeah, the, uh, this is only a very initial data in the early stage, but SSCD and providers load is relatively light. Uh, that's uh, we we know. Uh, this is uh, just for reference. Vertical is a CPU, a milli. Then the ver horizontal is a number of pods. Then more the number of pods, and how much SSCDs uh, CPUs are used or the providers, the CPUs are used, or the memory usage. That's we are monitoring, that we have monitored. But uh, so, so when looking at this graph, we think it's quite uh, light. So even 100 pot, 200 pods, uh, not much uh, load is placed. But uh, that's this is a theoretical, this is a theoretical understanding. So we haven't tried that yet. So. To directly answer your question, at the moment, you're right, yes, uh, not too many users, and the number of platform deployed is not all that great. Um, so still, we don't have uh, actual experience on being hit with uh, more load, but no matter how many number of pods increase, provider SSCD size should be able to handle. That's our understanding. <laughs> 